Hey guys, if you watched my last video, you would have seen that I went book shopping recently to Barnes & Noble and I mentioned at the end of the video that I was going to do a little haul of everything that I bought and kind of talk about why I got the books that I got. I also wanted to talk about a few other books that I bought a while ago that I just haven't really mentioned um, in any video. So we're going to talk about those books first. And the first book that I got was Fourth Wing. Um, I think you can guess why I got this. Um, everyone and their mother has been raving about this book and loving it and just talking about how obsessed they are with it. And the only thing I know about it is that it's a romanticy with dragons. And honestly, that's all I need to hear. I love a romance and I love dragons, so I'm sold. So hopefully I get to read this soon. I know the second book's coming out soon, so hopefully I get to read this and maybe jump into the second one and see if I like the series or not. I don't know if I'll do a video on it. I would prefer to do a video just to record my reactions and stuff, um, but we'll see. But anyway, that's the first book that I got. And then the second book that I got is Masters of Death by Olivia Blake. And honestly, I don't really know much about pretty much all of the books that I bought. But I know I've heard a lot of people talk about them. And they just sound really interesting and look really interesting. And part of the reason why I got this book specifically was the cover. I know not a lot of people like this cover. They prefer the Barnes & Noble exclusive edition which was like white and gold instead of the mint and purple. But I actually really like the mint and purple and I don't have any books with um, the color mint or like this color combination so I just thought it looked really cool. And I know I think oh Olivia Break um, was the author of Atlas 6 which is another book that everyone talks about and that I really want to read. But yeah, I got this to to see if I was going to like Olivia Blake. Olivia Blake. So again, we'll see. Hopefully I do like it. And then this next book I'm really excited about because I've been a fan of this series since I was in high school when I first read it on Wattpad and it is Death is my BFF by Katarina Tonks and I was obsessed with this series in high school and I'm so happy to see that it's been traditionally published honestly finally <laughs> this is so good and it so deserves to be published traditionally and for more people to pick this up because this is just such a fun series and I'm really excited to see the kind of differences that it has to the original Wattpad series because I know the author kind of like rewrote not like completely rewrote it but they elevated it and like edited it a lot so I'm really excited to see what's changed and like what's the same and obviously to continue the series once the next books comes out because I don't know exactly how many books there'll be but hopefully there's like at least three if not more because this is just a fun time and if you don't know what this book's about it's essentially about this girl Faith who dies when she's a little girl and death comes to collect her soul but he spares her soul but he promises to come collect her soul when she's 18. And this essentially follows him coming back when she's 18. The next books are the books that I bought in the video um, Come Shopping With Me at Barnes & Noble. And the first book that I really wanted to get was A Study in Drowning by Ava Reed. And this was another book that I've seen a lot of people talk about in another book that was also low-key a cover by because look at this cover I mean it's just so pretty and I know 
one of my favorite authors actually blurbed this and I didn't even realize until I was looking at the back. Erin A. Craig from House of Salt and Sorrows says this is a darkly romantic and unsettling eerie. I will be thinking about this book for a long time to come and that really got me because this looks like it's going to be kind of like a gothic dark academia story and again something another one that I don't really know anything about but from what I heard other people talk about when they were reading these books it sounds like right up my alley so another one I'm excited to read so the next book I got was another kind of cover by um when i saw it i just really liked how the cover looked like and it's a multitude of dreams by mara rutherford and picked this up mostly because the cover reminded me a lot of um edgar Allan poe especially here with the like raven or crow on the woman's shoulders and it also just gives me gothic like horror dark vibes which is something that I'm really into and if the book has any little bit of those vibes um, I'm going to be picking it, picking it up and this one's another one that was blurred by my, one of my favorite authors and they said that this is a dripping with bloody opulence a multitude of dreams creeps on you like a slight shadow and this book is essentially about inhabitants of a kingdom that are stuck in a castle after a plague has gone through the kingdom and apparently this character holds a secret that should never be revealed and the king of this kingdom who is also stuck in the castle is slowly going mad and it's going to essentially follow the unravelings of that and what's going down in the kingdom behind closed doors because apparently there are dark secrets that lie in it and that may be the answer to what is going on with the plague and what is going on with the outside wor world and when I opened this book up my suspicion of this book being inspired by Edgar Allan Poe was not far off because the author incorporated a quote from the mask of the red death which if you don't know the mask of the red death of the red death is essentially like the premise of the story where it's like um you know a bunch of rich people are partying in this um lavish castle of this lord so, so not only did the cover of the book give me vibes of Edgar Allan Poe with this raven but also the whole dream sense because Edgar Allan Poe also has a poem called A Dream Within a Dream. Um, so Edgar Allan Poe is another one of my favorite authors so anything that's even remotely close to a retelling of any of his stories I'm going to pick up because I just know it's going to be a great time and it's just going to include those gothic vibes and horror vibes that he has in his story so that's also why I got this book and I'm really excited to read it. Another book I got was The Phantom of the Opera. Um, this is a story or this is a book that I've been wanting to read for a long time ever since I first watched the movie with um, Gerard Butler. Absolutely fell in love with that movie and I love all the songs in that movie. So. I really really want to read the original story obviously to see exactly how different or how similar it is to the uh, musical um, and obviously like this is just a classic story and again it's got those goth gothic vibes are you seeing a pattern here I love the gothic so this was another buy and then another book I got which was actually kind of inspired and influenced by Bella from Thriller Pages was The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexand Alexandre Dumas. Um, I think a lot of people recently have been kind of picking this up ever since she read it on her channel and I believe she described it 
as like an ultimate revenge story or at least like that's kind of how people like know this classic it's like it's the ultimate um iconic revenge story which sounds like it's going to be messy and we love messy books and we love messy characters and i think the characters in here are also like morally gray much which is like most classics honestly i'm just really excited to read this i know it's huge <laughs> but everyone says that it's really good and the writing's amazing so i just really want to pick it up and i love classics i'm a classic girly as well so yeah i'm just really excited to dig more into classics which is something that i really wanted to do for a while and then the last book that i have is a certain hunger by chelsea g summers and this is another book that i've seen a lot of people talk about and this book actually has a lot of mixed reviews i think because it was kind of marketed as like a vampire book or like a vampire story but i think in reality it's more of so a metaphor the whole like vampire vampirism is used as a metaphor for the female life the female story and the kind of troubles that females face and um the social world and just the world in general and all of the hardships and all the discrimination and the disrespect that we've gone through and i saw um hannah from clockwork reader read this recently and she gave it five stars and it's like one of her new favorite books and you know we can always trust hannah she's got the taste so if she says it's good then it's gonna be good and i love stories like this that kind of use symbolism or metaphors or anything like that to kind of cover real life problems or social issues and all that stuff so if it includes that it talks about the female story the female struggles feminism possibly in general i'm not sure but and it includes like vampirism i mean what more could you ask for honestly so this is another one that i'm excited to get and hopefully i'll be able to love it as much as other people and i'll get to annotate it as well so yeah so yeah those are all of the books that i bought recently don't know when i'm actually going to be able to get to them but hopefully that'll be soon <laughs> as recently i've been in a really big reading club and i haven't been reading a lot of books but hopefully with this new haul i get inspired to pick up a new book and just fall in love with one of these so we'll see stay tuned for that journey i'm sure i'll be filming me reading most of these and annotating them etc so yeah that's about it for this one and i hope to see you in the next one bye